All right, this is just a, uh, this isn't meant to be a major tutorial on iOS, or iPad music making. This is just to show you how I do things to answer the what app is that question I get on Instagram almost daily, if not multiple times. Uh, these are my two main tools that you see in most every video. It says an iPad Pro 12.9 inch third generation. This is a Sound Devices Mix Pre 10M interface. Uh, I would not recommend purchasing either of these. If you're trying to be like me, uh, get a 12.9 inch second generation iPad Pro and get any class compliant USB audio multi-channel interface. Uh, I cannot recommend this one. Uh, briefly, I'll tell you why in both cases. Uh, first one, this the, the iPad Pro 3rd Gen is USB-C, and that sucks. USB-C wears out. The uh, little tab inside is not robust. The uh, connectors wear out really easily. I found this out the hard way. I thought I was having hardware problems, and it turns out the cables were just wearing out because I plug them in and out so often. Uh, and uh, it's a little buggy. The uh, uh, I'm recording this video in... June of 2019, so theoretically we'll have a fourth gen, or maybe, on in November, who knows, and uh, and maybe they'll sort some of these out. If this had two USB inter inputs, it would be the bomb. I could deal with two. Uh, I could deal with the problems of USB-C if there were two of them. Uh, but with only one, it's problematic, and I'll get to why. The sound device is MixPre 10M. This is the M apparently stands for musician. The sound device is primarily makes video products uh, for location recording. And uh, the MixPre 10T is uh, the, the television industry version of this. Uh, what it is is an, it has eight uh, microphone preamps and it can record to SD card, USB, uh, thumb drive simultaneously while acting as an audio interface and it uh, can be battery powered which is through a Sony L mount or or AA batteries and it has two USB connections a USB A which is a host port and USB C which is a client port uh, and here's where the problems lie the USB A connection which is what I have to use essentially uh, gives you 12 inputs which you can assign pretty much however you'd like in this, and two outputs. Uh, now this has four outputs, it's a 12 by 4 interface. Uh, but you can only see two with the USB-A connection, which, and then the, the major problem is that this is a client. This, or I mean, I'm sorry, this is a host, and this is the client. So what that means is you cannot use a USB hub with this. So no MIDI, this doesn't have MIDI. Uh, so you can't use any MIDI output <laughs> of any sort. Uh, you can't, uh, this, since it's a host board, it can theoretically provide power, and you can see there's power in it. Uh, however, the, uh, it doesn't provide enough power to power a third gen 12.9, so the battery drains in about three hours. So I have to, anytime I'm planning to music with this combination, I have to do it fairly quickly. I can't just leave it sit there and go have lunch, because it'll be at zero by the time I get back. Uh, so that sucks. Um, if I use the USB-C connection, which puts this in client mode and this becomes the host, then I can use a USB hub. I can use something like this, which is a multimedia port, put a USB hub on it. I can power the iPad. Uh, everything works great how I would expect it to work. But this, for reasons that are entirely opaque to me, Instead of, it, it is both core audio and class compliant MIDI. For a Windows machine, it shows up as a class compliant type 1 device. For Mac, it shows up as core audio. And in audio MIDI control on a Mac, you can determine the flavor of core audio you want from it. There's a list, I believe there's four in it. Uh, the fourth one is 12 in, 4 out, what you want. The first one, which is the only one iOS can see, is six stereo pairs in and four outputs as one group. So it's six, it's two by two by two by two by two by two by four. Uh, which is, pardon my French, fucking idiotic. 
us. So the iPad only sees that first stereo pair in that first group. If they just change the enum, if they just change the order and made the 12 by 4 the first one, this would be the best interface you could possibly purchase for the iPad. Any professional user would be able to make quality, release-worthy music with this pair right here. But since they don't do that, it is fundamentally useless. <laughs> I work around it. Uh, I have a lot of confirmation bias because A, it sounds great, and B, I spent a lot of money on it, so I want to use it. Uh, and I, I use it for a lot of other things. I can, I can use it for field recording and whatnot. It's a fantastic field recorder. Uh, but for the main thing I want it for, which is iOS with a bunch of inputs and outputs, it sucks. Uh, hopefully, I mean, I've been complaining about this for a while, and I do have a bit of an audience, especially on Instagram, so uh, hopefully they will address it at some point. Uh, but until I could not, if you got more money than cents, knock yourself out. I obviously am falling squarely in that category. Uh, yeah. In any event, the... Uh, the answer to the question, what app is that, which is the question I get the most, is the app is that is AUM, or uh, a lot of people say AUM, but AUM stands for Audio Unit, in, uh, Audio Unit Mixer. So I say AUM, and I'm right, and everybody else is wrong. Deal. The, uh, it is essentially, let me clear it out here. Uh, here's what you get when you first start out. You whack that plus, and you can choose audio or MIDI. Uh, an audio channel can be a hardware input from your multi-channel interface. It can be an audio unit. It can be inter-amp audio. It can be audio bus. So basically any way you can make sound on a iPad, you can bring into here, or iPhone, I suppose. Uh, it can be a file player, or it can be a bus. So you have a whole mess of buses that you can, uh, which is what makes this modular. You can actually feed it back, feed channels back on themselves, send them to anywhere. Uh, it's just a fantastic tool for for musicing. So you can you can have a synth on one channel, having it bust to somewhere else, uh, a looper, you know, anything. Uh, this is not a DAW. It is a mixer, and. Uh, it has a very sophisticated MIDI routing, any MIDI source and destination. Obviously, I can't use it with this paperweight, but uh, it shows up here, and you can and you get a matrix routing to route the MIDI however you want. Just fantastic. 99.9% .9 of my Instagram videos, I'm running this application, and the way I usually run it is with this. Uh, where to go? This set up right here. Now what this is, is a bunch of different channels that I have two buses, an A bus and a C bus, and they go to, uh, they get, go out the output as a stereo pair. Now my inputs are stereo pairs or, or mono inputs from this. They run to Audio Damage Enso, which is a tempo sync uh, tape loop style looper. And then I either send them to reverbs, I do some little bit of mixing, there's a delay here, here I have a reverb, uh, like so. And I just mix like I normally would mix after the fact. So there's really no magic to it. The, this is just a mixer app running some audio unit plugins that I have, that I made. So <laughs> uh, there's, there's no mystical aspect to it. It's actually a fairly simple rig, an audio interface, to the iPad, to a mixer, using plugins. So just like you would use a laptop. Uh, now, if you want to do this, uh, most of the interfaces you see around that are multi-channel will not have this as this unit's foibles. If you are uh, if you are a little skint, then one I would recommend that I use and it works great is the Tascam uh, US 4x4 which has MIDI in and out, uh, balance, four balance outs and uh, four, four combo ins. And the mic pre's are fine. It sounds great. You can, uh, you've got zero latency monitoring if you need it. Two headphone outputs which is handy. Uh, and this works great and it's, it's fairly inexpensive. It's, uh, it's problem is that it's very heavy and large. It's got these dumb, I mean, they're they're cool looking, but they're 
stupid heavy. Uh, so you can take them off, obviously, if you need to, and, and move the feet. There's feet on the bottom, so you can you can take those off if you need to. The other product line I recommend is the iConnect Audio. This is an iConnect Audio 2. Um, I, re I recommend the iConnect Audio 4 Plus, which has four combo inputs, four outputs, and can host two devices at the same time. Uh, and it provides enough power to power the iPad, so uh, you actually don't need a hub. You can plug straight into this, and then you got four ins, four outs, MIDI in and out headphones. Uh, the minus of it is the interface on the front is kind of nonsensical, so it takes a little practice to get used to. So the, the way I recommend is is something uh, a class compliant multi-channel like one of these. You plug that into a, a powered USB hub, so then you can power the device. You don't need any wall warts there. The powered USB hub plugs into a multimedia connector, which has USB. Uh, usually it'll have a power input. In most cases it's lightning. In this case it's USB-C. And this will goes into your iPad so you can power your iPad from its power, from its wall wart, and then run a USB hub that is also powered and then that can power all your USB MIDI devices. It can power your your interface, whatever. That's the way to do it. It's a fairly simple operation. Uh, but that's the key element, is that multimedia connector. Or if you're old school, the camera connection kit will also get you there. Uh, and there you have it. That's really all there is to it. If you want to uh, communicate with me in real time or whatnot, uh, on, our, on my Patreon there's a Discord, so uh, uh, which I'm on all day, every day. You can always ask me questions. Uh, I do a AMA on there monthly and uh, put up sample packs and I talk about this sort of thing a lot so you can always ask me questions there and uh, or catch me on Instagram Chris.Randall